what was in the chat y'all so good to see me back with another video this is mostly a response video and disclaimer now this is a triggering topic i didn't realize my last video was just going to get me as much flack as it did i just want to make a disclaimer this is my opinion and based off my experiences as a black woman in america okay a lot of people agree with me, but a lot of people disagree with me and started going in on me. And I got the comments here. We're going to go through it. I got to respond. But before that, if you're new to the channel, this video, subscribe, like, thumbs up, comment below your opinion. Even if you don't agree with my opinion, I would like to know your opinion. I like knowing the different experiences, especially from black women across the world. Like, I have a lot of comments I'm going to go over, but this one in particular that really stood out to me. So yeah, anyways, we're gonna get into the video. This is about controversies against the black woman. One thing I'm not a big fan of is how black women have been the blueprint for so many style trends in current American pop culture. Yet for years, black women had to be called ghetto, mocked and discriminated against for those style trends. Yet the second that white celebrities and white influencers co-op that shit, it's seen as trendy or in season. And none of these influencers or creators will ever have to deal with the subjugation and discrimination that black women faced, reinforcing the overwhelming double standard that black women have to face in this country. It's just really fucking unfair and I fucking can't stand it. Okay, as you can see in the video with the guy explaining a cultural appropriation. Cultural appropriation. Someone copying something from someone else's culture and then trying to make it into something else. Like when they started doing cornrows, they call it boxer braid or viking braids. That's cultural appropriating because everyone knows that black people invented it and it was called cornrows. He said about other races doing things that black women would be deemed as ghetto and stuff like that. It's like, I'm going to post some examples, but he's absolutely right. That's another controversy black women have to go through every day. Why can't we go to our corporate job with braids? Why can't we go to our corporate job with our natural curl pattern? Today is my first time wearing my hair like out and natural at work. I know a lot of things has changed and a lot of laws within the past 10 years, but back then it still was a thing. Women was getting fired left and right because of their natural hair color and their natural hair texture, something that they cannot change. And it's a thing. And I don't want people to just throw a rug over it. It's not whatever. That's so bad. And people are like, oh, black man, why don't you wear your natural hair? We can't even go to work about 10 years ago right now in our natural hair without worrying about being fired. Why now all of a sudden it's okay? It should have never been a thing that it wasn't okay. Now, pe most females wear their hair out, but other females, especially in corporate, do not feel comfortable. And I don't blame them. Look at the history. I was considered your hair not being done. Now, you're like, oh, wear your hair, wear your hair. And before, I couldn't. You can't just say, oh, you can't wear black. And then now it's a law saying that you could wear black. Oh, why are you not wearing black? Wasn't I just getting fucking told every day about for five years or 10 years straight? I this lands on the right side of TikTok and it's a safe space, but let's talk about hair in corporate America as a black woman. I was having this conversation with my boyfriend and it's super nuanced, so I hope I do a good job of breaking it down. But again, this is just from my perspective alone. Corporate America, there's definitely an underlying bias and undertone when it comes to black women and their hair. When I have a sew-in or a weave, whatever you want to call it, I get treated the best, easily. And that's not even just at work, honestly, in public places, same thing. But when I have braids, oh, you can tell there's a little switch that turns on. You can definitely tell they're thinking, wait, I thought you were one of us as soon as they see you in braids and just their whole demeanor switches up. And you know who I'm talking about when I say they, okay? This is where code switching comes into play. So black men and black women are known to code switch. Obviously we have two different personalities, one with our friends and family and then one at work. And I don't wanna say it's just us. I know other races and ethnicities also code switch. I just feel like ours is more prevalent. When they see us in braids, they're reminded that we're not one of them. And you can tell in the way that you're spoken to at work with a different hairstyle and outside of work again and especially in the south take this into play i am someone who's been born and raised in the south don't even get me started on natural hair oh they're not ready for that they want to act like they have 
normalized it in corporate America, but they absolutely have not. And you can tell in the way you're spoken to when you have certain hairstyles. Now I work a mainly remote job. So when I have braids for the most part, I just don't turn on my camera. And it's very telling that I feel very comfortable when I have a sew-in, I'll turn on my camera, it's fine. But when I have braids, I'm like, eh, I pick and choose who I turn on the camera for very telling and i am not ashamed do not take this for me being anti-black at all i'm not ashamed i love a good twist a good knot list braids i love braids i wore braids all my entire childhood so don't mistake this for that it's just you can tell especially when you work with some older baby boomers you can tell who's going to treat you differently just by seeing you in a certain hairstyle so i'm just not even in the mood for that i will turn off my camera that's just what it is anyways is it just me am i just making this up it's big club out here in miami and you know i had my little interview or whatever and basically so i go in i have to go through fucking tsa i'm talking about i scan a little cute they told me to scan this qr code and like once you go into like the little website or whatever, you have to scan your face, scan your ID, then enter like your information, like your name, address, and email address, whatever. All right, cool. Then they take copies of my physical ID. Don't know why. Then ask questions. Then I have to sign a waiver saying basically like, okay, if you get killed or you get hurt, we ain't responsible. All right, anyway. So, you know, I'll talk to dude, whatever. And so basically after that, he said, yeah, it's a no for me. Um... Basically because, you know, you're a little thicker than what we like and you have stretch marks and that you have a lot of visible tattoos. All right, cool. I was okay with the just, it's a no for us, but you went into detail. I was like, wait a second. I ain't never had nobody tell me no shit like that, but it's cool. It's a majority white club, so I really wasn't banking on getting that job, but I was just like, fuck it, like, let me just go. So, and also too, like, I'm just like, the whole interviewing thing is not something for me. Like, I haven't been to an interview for a club in so long. Like, I only been to, I've been working in the club for a while, and I only went to one interview. Any club that I worked at, I always knew somebody, or I was always got put on, and I was just, like, able to work. So, the whole little interview thing is, like, new for me. So, yeah, I'm just like, the fuck? Okay. Yeah, so if you come into Miami and you want to work in these big clubs like Eleven, Mr. Jones, Liv, and so forth, and you black, please do not waste your time. You're not going to get hired unless you know somebody in there or you... And if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. I'm not, but more power to you. Um, but yeah, like just stick... If you black, just stick to the urban clubs like Booby Trap the office any club in fort lauderdale 24 whatever like stick to those because any of the big clubs you're not gonna get you're not about to get in if you're black so yeah like i just wanted to tell y'all my little experience or whatever like because i'm actually like shocked like the fuck miami really is like racist as hell i don't even know if it's racist or them just being the colorist because it is it is a black girl that I do work there I'm, i only have seen one black girl but she's like super, super skinny. But whatever. If you're trying to get in the clubs, don't waste your time. Videos about clubs, not only in Miami, Vegas, New York, any metropolitan city, LA, who are racist against women of color, especially people that want to be dancers or bottle girls. If you're not light skinned, you better know somebody who knows somebody because it's going to be an uphill battle, especially if you have tattoos, especially if you're thicker or have stretch marks, even though you can go to a club right now as I speak and see a white woman with stretch marks in there. It's just, it's not that. It's just that you're black. And a lot of people don't want to admit it, but here's proof. This light skinned caramel girl was going to a club in Miami trying to get a job. She's focusing on everything, did her interview. And she didn't get hired because she's too dark. But they made every other excuse in the book. The real reason they said lastly is because of her skin tone. So I just had my first NYC racism experience that you have when you go to the club as a black woman. My friend knows a promoter who is at Little Sisters Lounge and she was like, oh, let's go out. It's a Saturday night. And I was like, cool, never been there. Seems like a cool spot. Why not? We get there and the vibe seemed cool at first, but I do notice that we are the first two women there 
So we're there and we're in the session with the promoter just vibing, you know, it's a cool time, whatever. And let me also just mention that the promoter is black, keeping that in mind. So we're there vibing, it's probably an hour into it, you know, we're still having a good time. And the promoter gives me his hand and he's like, we have six more girls coming in. And I'm like, okay, cool. It's not gonna be just me and my friend here now. But I noticed he grabs my hand cause I was sitting at the top of the section where you can sit down. But it's like, he's grabbing my hand to motion for me to come down and stand next to him. So I'm like, okay. Conveniently in that moment, I do have to go to the bathroom. So me and my friend go to the bathroom and we come back, so many people in the section, we managed to get our way in. And at this point we're standing, which is fine. We're just standing, holding our drinks and dancing until we notice it's super crowded. And then the promoter goes over to my friend and says something. Basically he says, we're gonna have to kick you two out uh, because it's a little too crowded here. And now, for some that might not sound bad, but I just want to make note that we were the only two black women in this section. Everyone else, with the exception of one person who I think might have been biracial, I don't know. The fact of the matter is me and my friend, only two black women in that section. And he literally says to my friend, yeah, we're gonna have to kick you two out to make room. Now for some people, this might be not be a big deal. This might be like over drawn out or whatever, but the promoters I deal with, this would never happen. They would never invite me out, know how many people I was bringing with them and ever tell me to get out of a section. That's never ever happened to me when I deal with a promoter. And the fact that it dealt happened with this promoter and not to mention that this promoter is a black man is just very unfortunate. This is the first time I've ever dealt with this in NYC and I've been here for almost five years now. Needless to say, I will never be dealing with that promoter ever again. Cool. Like the vibes was good, but like they were literally playing Ashley Tizzo. I will insert a clip. Right. On top of that, it's just like I was surrounded by a bunch of 22 year old white women also. So I kind of was just like, you know, I go where I'm appreciated, you know, not where I'm tolerated. And that will be my bottle going forward. We're not even trying to work at the clubs. What if we just want to go out with our girls? Sometimes we can't even get in. We so I never make videos like this, but we're going to talk about the colorism, elitism, and honestly racism in New York City nightlife because I'm over it. So yeah, let's talk about a story that just happened. Shout out Common Ground Bar in the Meatpacking District because you're the main character in this whole story and we're going to get into it. So yeah. <laughs> Here is their Instagram for anyone wondering in all of its glory. <laughs> So basically, my sister and I were meeting our friend from high school. He was at Common Grounds. So we were like, okay, we might as well pull up, right? So we're waiting in line, and <laughs> immediately they're just like, no, this will not do. Keep in mind, we're the only like black girls in line, like dark skinned black girls in line. So already bad, right? So God forbid we're in line, right? And they kind of like escort us out. And keep in mind, these were like four bouncers that were all darker complected, clearly PLC men themselves, you know? So, you know, we're there looking all cute and we're like, uh, what is going on? So we just went right back in line and they're like, no, 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 talk to our boss. So we talked to the boss and I'm like, hey, like, why aren't we getting in? And he's like, he does the dumbest thing. Hold on. <laughs> He's like, okay, so you can either open a tab at the bar for $20 or you can buy a table for $800. So we're like, um, okay, we both have $20. Um, well, open a tab for $20. Like, that's fine. And he's like, I didn't say $20. What are you talking about? No, you have to buy a table for $800. Like, I didn't say that. And we're just like, Sir, come on, like what? So clearly they're insulting our intelligence and people are still just going in. So we're like, okay, let's just go back in the line. Like, why are they being so weird? Like, I don't have time for this. And um, they're just like, no, you have to get out. And obviously their tactic is to embarrass us in front of all the people that are like paying for tables or able to get in. But I don't get embarrassed. So it didn't work. <laughs> And I'm like, you know what? No, we're gonna talk about this face to face. Why don't you want us in? And they're like, ask our boss, go to the front again and ask our boss. No. And I said, you know why you don't want us in here. Like, let's be honest. And they're like, no, ask the boss. Absolutely not. 
So long story short, New York City, particularly Manhattan, is <laughs> honestly the worst when it comes to nightlife and I'm over the desirability politics that play into whether you get into a place to spend more money. All I could do was just shake my head. And it's shaking my head because so many people of color are denying the stereotypes, controversies, and racism that we go through on a daily basis. What world are you living in? Can you please tell me that black women are not hated, most hated? We may not be all hated by everyone, but we are hated. I'm not the only one who's saying this. I'm, that's the reason I put other people's videos so you can see it's not just me. Not a black woman go through the stereotypes and controversies. It's not just me saying that I'm not getting this out of my ass. And if you don't like the receipts and it's just not your experience, it's not your experience. But you can't just because it's not your experience, this mean you can deny that it's not happening because it is happening. A lot of people ask this question. Why are black women really angry today? I have an answer to that question. It's actually pretty simple. Black women are really angry because this is why. They are so sick and tired and they are extremely fed up. Why? Because all they do is get treated like shit all the time. Sadly, in society and its generation, black women are the most hated, mistreated, and the most disrespected human beings in the planet. Which I don't understand why. And there's a problem. The problem is, is that not only people look at them and just assume she has anger problems and they just get thrown under the bus by not just other individuals who don't look like them but unfortunately black men not all they do it the most because i've been seeing a lot of them on tiktok and other social media platforms who disrespect and bash black women the most but it doesn't matter all i'm asking is this is that people need to stop throwing hate and stop bashing one another and just look at each other and just say you are a human being and you deserve to be treated with respect regardless of who and what you are or where you're from originally. Sadly, today, black women are the most mistreated humans and they don't deserve it. Nobody does. We're all one race, the human race. And black women are queens. And I know you may not experience it and you're one of the lucky ones, but that does not mean it doesn't happen. Even this corporate lady you could go on her page and you can see that she's very upkept, she's very corporate, she wears all business casual things, stuff like that. Why is she followed around the store with a two-piece suit on? She looks like she just came out of the school and she's one of the administrative staff. And not just an elementary school, of like a college or a high school. She looks like she could be someone's principal. Why do you think she's going inside of a store to steal? Oh yeah, because she's black. People keep being racist to me this year more than usual and I don't understand what God is trying to show me, what lessons I'm trying to learn, what I'm being prepared for right now, but it's actually crazy. So I'll give you an example. Yesterday I go to a shop that I go to all the time, so much so that I talk to the people so I know every time I'm going into that shop I'm going to be there for an extra five minutes or ten minutes than I expected to be in any shop because I'm catching up with the people in the shop. I've gone into there now and I've just taken my braids out so my hair was in like an afro, right, because I was about to wash my hair. And the guy goes to me, oh, did you get your finger caught in the plug when you were taking your phone out? So I have looked down to see if there's a plug by me because I'm thinking, plug? My phone? I didn't plug my phone into anything. I've got headphones in though, do you know the ones with the, um, the string or whatever? So I'm thinking, does he think that that's connected to the charger? I don't know. My mind is doing all of these things in like three, four seconds. So I've looked at him, I'm confused and I said, pardon? So he repeated himself and he's smiling and then now his wife is smiling again i'm cool with both of them so i'm so confused i'm thinking what is the joke again i've looked down i'm like i didn't bring a charger here me naive me because why would you be saying what you're about to say and then he's like no your hair like you know it's like electric shock and like they're giggling laughing like it's funny and i'm just like straight faced because i'm so confused like why would you say that like this is just my natural hair but it's not electric shock it's an afro I'm black. Then it ended up going on to a conversation of me looking better with straight hair and conversations about braids and opinions about black hair, which again, we're never gonna be having any more conversations about that because it's very clear from how that conversation ended that black women and black people and children and boys, we're gonna do what we want with our hair. Our hair is our experience and it's not for anybody who doesn't have black hair to comment on what we're supposed to be doing with our hair or what looks better on us. It all goes back to what I was saying earlier in the year about black people making up 4% of the UK. You're always seen as someone feeling like they can have a comment on certain things to do with you like my hair is nobody's business my skin is nobody's business i've had these conversations i've lost friendships this year 
a friend saying things that I'm like, oh, this is how you really feel about me. This is why I started off this video saying, like, I don't know what God is trying to show me, but it's all around race. Like, so much things keep happening around race. I speak up about certain things, and then people come out calling me a tree swinger just because I said I don't feel comfortable living in a country where people are picking me apart all the time when I'm just trying to exist. And people told me, well, you just haven't assimilated enough. Huh? Like, how about you mind your business enough and don't ask me questions that has nothing to do with you, how I present, what I look like, what I do, how my hair grows out of my head is nobody else's business. It's not appropriate. And people will say, because they're not calling you the hard, the N word with the hard ER at the end, or they're not calling you a monkey or a tree swinger, then it's okay for them to analyze you and look at you like, oh, this shiny thing. How do you do that with yourself? Like leave me alone. It's really uncomfortable and it's really unfortunate that just minding your business, living your life, you let your guard down with people because you should be able to as a human being and then they'll just pull the rug out underneath you and do something and say something that shows you you're not completely safe. Now of course with associates, with people that have to be around, shopkeepers etc, that in itself is not, it doesn't feel nice but it's not an intimate relationship but as I said earlier, I've had to end friendships, I've had to pull away from friendships, people that I've been close with because things are being exposed to me and I'm just like I don't understand this it's very frustrating like I don't want to be of the belief that I can't be friends with or I can't have community with or I can't just get along with people of any other race but it's like everywhere I turn people keep doing things that's just not okay and appropriate and I'm supposed to laugh about it or I'm supposed to teach people things I'm not your search engine I shouldn't have to be the one that's schooling you on things that happen with black people I'm not here asking you inappropriate questions I'm not here picking you apart I'm not comparing you to slaves and servants and things like that it's not okay it's so draining it's so tiring and this is why when I said what I said earlier in the year about how I felt about living in England and loads of people came out giving me their racism and oh just get over it how do you get over something that continues to happen all the time huh how do you get over something that is happening to you all the time when you're minding your business minding your business giving money to people you're going into a shop to give people your money you're giving people your time and your energy and conversation you're investing in friendships you're spending time with people you're letting them into your house you're going into their house you're giving them presents and gifts and money and all of your energy and time only for them to show you oh i only see you as an object oh i only see you as something that i can sit here and critique oh i don't actually see you as human let me pick you apart because i don't feel like you're like me and we're supposed to just get over that that's not comfortable. No other reason. And honestly, after hearing her thoughts, it just hurts my heart that this is still going on. Like all these videos are recent. Like, it's happening every day, different parts, even UK, Canada. All right, my final thoughts. It's a lot of controversies when it comes to black women, our hair, going to the stores. Even if you wanna go out to eat, somebody especially the servers that's just sitting there watching you eat with your friends like why can't every have a normal eating outing like everyone else you think i'm gonna run off not with these heels on like what the hell and i hate it and i just that's the reason i even made this video we have to talk about it and the fact that it's so many people of color denying it what world do you live on next as a black woman myself, I don't think the world hates black women. Yeah, Melancholy Glows 18 went off in a whole paragraph. So I'm just gonna read her final rant. My thoughts are, things are rough out today in our world where we have to keep on pushing, don't give up. Black people in America aren't oppressed. It's a slap to the face of your ancestors and the people today who have awful hardships around the world. Once again, making it about everyone thing instead of a black person thing. Okay, let me continue. I'm not saying the Western world is perfect, but we have more rights, privileges, and freedoms today, especially as women. There are many women today who are being oppressed and have little to no rights. I don't think racist offenses about someone of a different race who has to touch your hair. They're just curious and think our hair is cool. Most of the time, cultural appropriation is just appreciation. There's nothing to be wrong, to be inspired by different cultures. We should be allowed to be inspired by many diverse and amazing cultures around the world to create something new. Black people who act white, there's nothing wrong with liking or doing things that aren't a black people thing. You're still black no matter what they say. She's a Jamaican girl from Canada. Racism in Canada and the history is not even a half of the things that we have been through in America. 
Canada, America. So that's extreme as it is in America, especially to this privileged people that have the rights of owning slaves for generations and have been passed down from family member to family member. No, it's not the same. So the fact that you're from Canada, it makes sense. And I'm not gonna go as hard on you because you don't know what it's like. If you come to America for a year, like I wanna go home. Appreciation is just appreciation. No, no, it's not. Kim K boxer braids really and I know she took enough black peen to know those are cornrows it would never be boxer braids the world does not hate black women and it's funny because someone commented under this you're part of the problem dismissing their experiences because you don't go through it I said well said because it's true just because you don't go through it doesn't mean it's not a thing black experiences do not represent the world I said that and if you watched the first two seconds of my video I said disclaimer everyone in the world does not hate black women it's just how i feel at times in my life and my experience as a black woman we don't hate y'all but some of y'all need to change the attitude and y'all will be fine like white women don't have the biggest attitude in the planet like latinas don't be called spicy or fiery latinas when they have attitudes as well why when we have attitudes a fucking problem the attitude's an attitude no matter who has it just go out there and experience talking to genuine kind god-fearing black men social media isn't the spokesperson for all things <laughs> 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 for all we think i think more black women need to talk about the experience growing up in a single parent house because it feels like when a black man talks about it it's immediate hate and attack you know what i'm gonna make a video on that thank you for the inspiration I would like to know black women, what was your experience growing up with a single mother? Because I can't imagine you had all great experiences growing up. I actually made a video about me growing up in New York City, but I'm gonna get in a deep dive in that next video idea. Thank you. God-fearing black men, most of them are married. And if they're not married, they're low-key gay. And if they're not low-key gay, they're just focused on themselves or they like white women they don't like us and i know you're like oh that's not all of us it's not all of us but that's like 90 percent of everything i just said the five other five percent are out there as well i'm not saying they're not but it's rare that you find a good single kind black god-fearing man in these day of age chuckle thank you for making me laugh comments all the ones i just don't want to care for they just saying no the world doesn't hate black women no. i love hearing what you guys think and i wish you could communicate without you guys downplaying my opinion as well anyways comment below what you think y'all just give me some good video ideas subscribe to the channel if you haven't already give this video a thumbs up share with someone who you think needs to hear this and i'll see you next video and ain't no competition because i'm bigger better better i'm a bad mama chama what even the pajamas I